Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace. I'm sure some of you have noticed that I have been MIA lately. This is because I had to go into the hospital to have some abdominal surgery done. At the time they told me I was going to be in the hospital three to five days. Five really maximum. I wound up being in there seven. Got home the other day and have been re uh, recuperating. Still can't wear tight fitting clothes, hence the pajamas. Now, as far as the meat and potatoes go of this video, I have Laserdisc that I want off of eBay. And I have a package here that came from China. Not Hong Kong, though. Mainland China. But before I get to that, in a previous video, I showed you this. Video Watchdog. This is issue 160. And in here, they talk about Video Nasties, the definitive guide. This is in PAL standard, region encoded for zero or all, and it lists for just under 25 pounds. And when I went to Amazon US to order it, they said, well, we don't have that title. Went to Amazon UK, they had the title, we can't ship it to where you are. So then I went to the publisher of the uh, collection, and that was Nucleus, and I ordered it directly from them. And it's cool because I got my order in fast enough to get a limited edition signed, or limited edition numbered copy. The first 5,000 are numbered. And I think, if I remember correctly, the invoice said mine will be one, number 149. But I look forward to that. Anyway, back around, well, in the early days of home video, and this applies to the UK and the US, there was no such thing as um, ratings on videos. Uh, there were no real guidelines, really, so you can pretty much get away with anything. But a busybody in England by the name of Mary Whitehouse decided to take it upon herself to have some horror films banned. And she later proudly proclaimed, I haven't seen a single one of these movies. Great. The ignorant banning films. Now, I think I have mentioned this before, my stance on banning I hate banning, I hate censorship, unless it's self-censorship, like if a company said, uh, has offered a title from a uh, rights holder, and how about publishing this movie? And they look at it, and we're not publishing that. They're in their perfect right to do that. If a book publisher has submitted a manuscript, we're not publishing that, that's fine. But when you have the government come in and say, you can't buy that because you can't sell it, that's wrong. That is purity wrong. Now, apparently they were banned, these films were banned in England in waves. First wave being around 79 to 80 titles. And it amazes me some of the films that are listed there. Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead, I've had Night of the Living Dead since almost day one of home video. I bought it uh, on VHS a couple times. I bought it on Laserdisc, and it was released in uh, the U.S. on Laserdisc more than once. And uh, let's see. Oh, I have it on DVD. Uh, the Thing, uh, we're, we're talking about John Carpenter's remake of The Thing. Saw that in the theater. I have it on Laserdisc. It is a stunning movie. The music is perfect. It goes perfectly with the film. Uh, the images are very uh, spooky and or beautiful, depending on what you're looking at. And um, I just don't understand a film like that uh, making a band list anywhere. Yes, it's a graphic, gory movie. But I, I don't know about England, but when it was released theatrically here, they let you know that. 
it was given a strong R. So anything rated R, you pretty much know is going to have something somebody's going to object to. And then they have some called the Final 39. These titles were added to the Video Nasties van list, but sometime prior to the expiration of the, recording video, the Video Recordings Act of 1984, prior to that expiring, uh, these 39 films were dropped from the ban list. But then there were another batch, the Dropped 33, which were added to the um, ban list, Video Nasty's ban list, but were dropped prior to uh, the conclusion of that act. So the act was still in force, but on those 33 titles, they lifted the ban. But on the other 39, they didn't. And on the 79 or 80, I don't know if they did that or not. But anyway, that's cool and I'm looking forward to that. One of the films that's in that list in the dropped 33 section, it's a classic horror film by Dario Argento called Inferno. Now this is cool because it includes an interview with Dario, <coughs> excuse me, Dario Agento. I didn't just get this, but I'm using it for Sean Dale anyway. Now, for the first laser disc I got, in a recent magazine I showed you the back cover of Shock Cinema. This is issue 39, and I showed you the back. This is an iconic image from a film that was one of the video nasties. It was one of the titles that were added to the ban list in England, and it was never taken off, at least until the end of the Video Recordings Act. I show you that to show you this laser disc. This is from Vestron Video. I Spit on Your Grave was released on Laserdisc in the US at least three times. So it's not uh, that hard to find here. However, this version, this copy, this release, isn't all that common. I checked out the Laserdisc database, which I always do when I get a batch of Laserdisc. Excuse me. No more tea. Anyway, I believe I've mentioned this practice before, but the Laserdisc database, they list over 47,000 Laserdisc titles released around the world where they were released, all the particulars about the release and so forth. But on some titles, they don't have any information other than the title. So there will be the title and there'll be the reference number, which in the case of this video is a ZL016. Now all the other information was missing. My mind kind of jumped the track there. I used to have a friend, whenever that would happen, she'd say, catch that train, Mark. So I lost my train of thought. Anyway, This particular release only had a placeholder listing on the Laserdisc database. So I entered in all the missing information, the number of sides, the length, whether it's CX noise reduction encoded or not, uh, the style of the jacket, the style of the sleeve, the language, the uh, all the here's and wherefores and whatnots. Now, this is a strange laser disc. I haven't watched it yet, but I have well over 700 laser discs in my collection. Many that were made in the U.S., many were made in Japan. I have quite a few that were made in England by PDO UK, 
and I have quite a few that were made in Austria. Even though I I do know that there were two print plants press, two laser disc manufacturing plants located in Germany, one owned by Sino Press. I think they've changed their name since then. And uh, WEA Manufacturing, Warner Brothers. WEA also had had a plant here. Anyway. You'll notice there the sticker affixed to the jacket made in West Germany. I'm sure you'll have also noticed that it was licensed by Vestron from Wizard Video. Don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. But it says they're printed in West Germany. Now something also really strange about this disc taking a lot of time on just the beginning here. Okay, in the past I've mentioned mint marks, which can be found in this dark silver band that rings the label. Now only one label, not one label, only one manufacturer never listed mint marks and that was PDO UK. The Japanese plant owned by Pioneer only well didn't use mint marks only their earliest releases. They then went to hand etching uh, the mint marks on the disc and then machine stamping them and so that made PDO UK the only plant worldwide to have never used mint marks, which is how you can tell where a disc was manufactured for one thing. No mint mark. Okay. No mint marks. So we shall see what we shall see when we get around to seeing it. Okay, from BBC, BBC, BBC video. We have Wallace and Gromit. A grand day out and the wrong trousers. This is a two-sided disc. It's in CAV. A Grand Day Out is on side one. It runs 24 minutes. It was nominated for the Academy Award in 1990 for Best Short Film, Animated Short Film. And then on side two in CAV is the winner of the 1993 Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. Now, these were also released in Japan on Laserdisc, but they only, and in CAV, but they only had one per disc. I, one volume had one and one had the other. So you had to spend twice the money. Okay. Big. Not a whole lot I need to say about this one other than this is a later uh, release. An earlier release, which this one replaced. You, could, you can tell the difference because, A, they used a different pose for Tom Hanks here. And also, the back, background on the earlier release is blue. And it was published by Pioneer Special, Pioneer Special Editions, whereas this one was published by Fox Video. Here's another laser disc that was released in the US several times. The musical Oliver. 46 chapters, which they list on the back of the jacket. This maintains the original theatrical aspect ratio of 2.35 to 1.
Okay, next up we have another title that was released in the U.S. more than once. Pulp Fiction. This is in a gatefold jacket. And it includes some extras. All of them at the end of side three. You have uh, theatrical trailers from the United States, Japan, France, the United Kingdom, Germany, and something called a new movie featuring work from Quentin Tarantino. Finally, for the Laserdisc, I could have sworn I had this on Laserdisc, but I went to the database, and the database says, no, you don't. So, you don't know. I do know we have it on DVD and on VHS. Now, there are 17 chapters, and what I found confusing, it might confuse somebody going out and looking for this title out in the wild, the catalog number is exactly the same as the catalog number used for an earlier, slightly earlier release, which I don't know if it was pulled or not, but both have the same reference number, 239AS. Okay, who is game for a package from China? Good friend of mine, Superdan88, turned me on to a company called Yes Asia, and even though I had a credit there, credit balance of around $12, I hadn't done anything with it. Finally, I did something with it. Hey, 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 talk about surprise. This isn't what I ordered from China. I am still getting a package from China, at least I'm supposed to be. But I have been waiting for this forever. It's video game related. Okay. Some people may scream when I do this. Don't know what I just did with the scissors. Okay, well, I don't want to wind up back in the hospital. Ah, yes. Here we are, here we are, here we are. I had known this was in my mailbox. I would have done a special video on it. I did not expect this to come from China. But I guess these days almost everything comes from China, so there you are. This is a homebrew game that has been in the works for years. The version I have is in the Japanese style packaging and it has Japanese text. 
also has some English text manuals in English that's good this will play on the Genesis master uh, master system the, the Sega Genesis the Sega Mega Drive the Sega CD and the Mega CD I am talking about Pierre Solar it finally came For sale and use in Asia, same assembled in China. For play and use with PAL or NTSC Mega Drive system, not licensed or sponsored by Sega Corporation. Huge and epic story, unique battle system, outstanding graphics, Hi-Fi, FM, and PCM BGM, and four save slots. For up to two players, and it is compatible with both the three button and six button joysticks or control pads. Now, if you want to play just the cartridge version, you can. But the Sega CD, Mega CD, will give you enhanced visuals and sound. I cannot believe this finally came. Well, I'm excited. Okay. When I next have a video to put up, I will put up another video. Until next time, stay awesome.